Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, I have the pleasure to chat with the American pop singer songwriter NBC The Voice season 23 contestant Kala Banham. In this newest episode, Kala provides a walkthrough of her journey on The Voice, being in an a cappella group, message for Blake Shelton, friendship with Gina Miles, experience in public relations, whether she thinks being musically flexible is important for a career, where her open book of honesty comes from, and more. Now, with that being said, hope you enjoy my conversation with Kala. Hi, Kala. How are you? Hello, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I mean, it's so wonderful to be able to speak to you. I've been trying to get you on this show for the longest time um, since the first audition that you made. Um, I mean, there's got to be a lot of things running through your mind. I, I guess the whole thing with the voice related, I guess, but also you've got a lot of things that you've done before the voice mm -hmm. um, that we have to talk about as well, because I find it interesting. You were, I guess... You had, a, I guess, a career in public relations and you kind of got the first hand of like the gist of what entertainment business is like, I guess. So, you know, basically the inner workings of everything. Uh, let's make that one one thing clear. Um, I, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, um, OK, so uh, I want to I want to start off by talking about the um, I guess the voice journey for you. Mm -hmm. Um it's got to be rather fulfilling, I guess, in the end, when you kind of look back on it and you kind of take the time to reflect on what you've learned and what you've taken away from the experience. What what was that journey like on The Voice for you? Yeah, I mean, it was a crazy experience. It It did kind of feel like a full circle sort of moment because this has been a goal of mine for a really, really long time. Um, I actually first auditioned for the show back in 2019 and I had auditioned for every season that had come around since then. So I think in total I auditioned for five seasons, including the one that I ended up getting on. Um, and every single time I would get callbacks and I would go all the way through the audition process, basically up until the point where producers were like inviting people to come out to LA. Um, so I've gotten very, very far every single time. So for me, um, a lot of my journey with the voice started a long time before what you actually see on TV. And I uh, had put in a lot of work to sort of figure out what I, what kind of artist I wanted to be and needed to become in order to be, you know, someone that was worth having on the show. Um, but then obviously actually getting on the show, it kind of uh, took that to a whole other level. You know, it was not only just me auditioning for producers at this point, it was auditioning for the coaches and for America and getting people to want to root for me and um, not only enjoy my journey on the show, but afterwards. And uh, I feel like I had a lot of great takeaways from the show, but the biggest thing was just don't give up because I mean, I took a lot of no's before ever getting onto that voice stage, but then even um, when I was on the voice stage, I proceeded to lose a lot <laughs> but I still I still stuck through it and um, I managed to make it work so uh yeah I think the biggest thing is that I didn't give up and I'm hoping to take that lesson away with me for the rest of my life throughout throughout the rest of this journey <laughs> absolutely well I, I want to read something that you said um before you even I guess the whole blind audition first aired on on people's uh, television screens or wherever they're watching it I mean you posted on Instagram this is crazy to think of how long ago this post was made um, because this was posted on February, February 19th of this year. Um, and you said that many of you know that I've been attempting to get on the voice for years. So to say I finally made it to that stage is an absolute dream come true. Thank you so much for all of the love and support so far. Now place your bets. Did I get a chair to turn? Um, and now to think of the whole experience on the voice is it surreal to think that like from that post you made to think that you've gotten so much nose in the past and now here you are you've knocked down that door and that barrier and you finally get through that um i guess that that open pathway to the voice um and to finally get the validation that you needed about your artistry um you know there were so many of the coaches fighting for you um one including uh, obviously we i have to also recognize kelly's fight and and the whole thing as well um kelly was blocked for people who don't know um and niall took um 
Kala in the first auditions. Um, and then everything from there kind of took a whole turn. You know, it was like you went from coach to coach. It was interesting because you don't get to see that often. Uh, what was that sort of experience like for you? That was crazy. <laughs> that was so, so bizarre. I never, well, first of all, even in my initial round, uh, my blind audition, I I said, like, I never would have imagined a coach would use their their block for me. Um, that was just never something that I had ever I would have, I would say it jokingly. I remember saying it like, ah, oh, ha, ha, coach will use a block for me, but I never meant it seriously ever. And so for it to actually happen, I was in shock. And then, so I definitely didn't expect to not only get a block, but to get every other coach to use their steel for me at some point in the competition that was, and to then be on three separate teams. It was very, very, yeah, surreal, I guess is the best word. Like I, I never ever imagined that I would, you know, even be on this show let alone have such a wild journey throughout it. So it's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's been a lot of different things happening throughout the experience. Um, I also want to recognize Blake Shelton um, because he, he just comes up with the most like corniest puns you can ever uh, yep. think of. Um, I mean, I, I was, I was uh, cracking up when he made the, the pun of taking a chance um and then you kind of asked him how many times have you made that joke like yeah <laughs> um, uh, what, i mean for people that want who have watched the voice for a number of years have also recognized that this is blake's last season on the voice um if there was one message that you would want to give to blake um now that he's departing his journey from the voice what would that be hmm single message i mean the first message that comes to mind is don't be mad at me for not choosing to be your last ever contested on your last ever on your last ever team but seriously i would say like thank you for giving this show or being such an integral part of the legacy that this show has you know because because without it like it wouldn't still be going today so at least my my opinion i don't think it would still be going today without without what he's done for the show so Thank you for sticking around uh, long enough for me to eventually be on that stage. <laughs> well, I mean, um, there's there's been so much things that I think that we can look back on Blake's career and uh, also on The Voice. But I want to talk about your blind audition because I felt the song choice was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, that's not an easy song to sing. It isn't. It, it, it is a big song. It's it's rangy, it's pitchy, um, and for people who don't who haven't watched her blind audition, she sang both sides now by Joni Mitchell. That song is an iconic song. Why was that song sort of the? I don't know what the word is for it, but why was that song the selection for your start out to kick off your voice career? Yeah, I mean it. Well, obviously it's it's an iconic song and I, I enjoy taking I enjoy taking songs that are well known and sort of putting a different twist on them. That's something that I enjoy doing, um, and something that I see as a viewer that tends has the potential to do well in the show if it's done correctly. Um, and I wanted to do it correctly. But even besides like the technical reasons why I chose it, it was also just kind of a gut feeling thing, as weird as it is to say that. Um we had to submit our song selections for for the blind audition process. And um, I gave a list of songs and uh, Both Sides Now was on that list, but uh, it was sort of further down, like probably halfway down the list or something like that. And then, uh, and I actually had COVID at the time when I was submitting that song selection. And so I couldn't really sing anything. And so I didn't really know, I just kind of put together the songs and threw it out them and said, okay, well, hopefully something works. Um, and then as I started recovering from COVID and getting better and I started having a voice again, I could not stop singing both sides now. It just couldn't get out of my head. And it was the only thing I was practicing. And I just had this feeling about it that it was supposed to be my song. And so I, I emailed the music department and said, I'm so sorry that this is so past the deadline, but I really just want to make both sides now my number one choice. And it ended up happening. So I feel very, very lucky that it ended up, it ended up working out that way. So. Sure, and I, I I feel that there are certain songs where people can sing for their blind auditions, um, but your choice was Both Sides Now by Joni Mitchell, which was very um, captivating 
to say the least, because there, I guess the whole thing with that song is there's also the, I guess the, I guess the climax part of it too, um, where it goes from um, the both sides now part in the chorus, I guess is, is mm-hmm. where it goes up. Um, and then it's like, then it comes back down, then it goes right back up. And that's a song with like such a story in it. Mm-hmm. And I guess like they'll tell, tell, well, I mean, I, I, w- I want to say this as well. I feel a lot of the co- competition shows are based off of storytelling. Um, yeah. Because I remember I was talking to this one contestant from another competition show and I was uh, asking them about, you know, what what do they look for? You know, what do they look for in, in these competition shows? And they're like, well, certain people get declined not because they're not talented. It's because that it's not the message that they're looking for right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and there's certain points where they want to look for certain storytellers and a certain story to it mm-hmm. um, for that year. But for you, I guess, choosing both sides now, was there any other songs that you could share with us that were on that list before you ultimately chose that song um a song that i had been considering um was glimpse of us by joji which i've had a couple of people request from me but um that was that was near the top of my list and then um i don't remember if a a different artist performed it the season before no i don't think i think bodhi ended up doing it but that was after the blind auditions had happened but um i that was one that I enjoyed singing a lot at the time and still love singing a lot right now. And I think also lyrically does a great job of painting a picture story-wise. That was the biggest thing for me. You know, it didn't really matter what what genre of music I wanted to tap into. It was more so just, can I relate to these lyrics and can I pull a message out of them that not only the coaches, but the audience is able to connect with too. So, um, cause that was the biggest thing for me is uh, I wanted the coaches to be able to feel the story that I was telling because all I have is the voice and, and the lyrics and I said that in my blind audition so for me it was very important to to choose a song that um was really conveying a strong message for sure and I, I want to read this quote that Kelly Nile and Chance said about your blind audition Kelly started with what a perfect song you show dynamics or seeing you emote like that. You really felt the message and the words mean something to you. We would have been beautiful together. I'm going to steal you, mark my words. Um, and then Niall, um, who you ended up taking uh, with your first choice, that song choice, first of all, impeccable. And you did such a beautiful job on it. So brittle and so tender in the soft moments. And I haven't got a singer like you on my team you're unbelievable. You've got like such a storytelling voice, so sweet, so beautiful. And the song choices that are available for you is huge. I just want to go grab a guitar and write a song with you because you've exude that feeling. This is my first season here and I love you to be on the first ever Team Nile. Um, and now to hear those back from what I'm saying now to you, hearing those quotes back from those coaches, what did that sort of encouragement mean to you now that like they've basically validated from the get-go that this is what you're meant to do yeah it was still unbelievable honestly like when I hear that quote back it's crazy to to imagine that those words were said to me especially with um you know the praise for the song choice because I was nervous about it like I I was really excited and it was my number one song choice but as soon as I saw that that was the song that I was given I was like oh my gosh now if they hate the song choice I have no one to blame but myself (laughs) It's uh, hopefully that they appreciate what I do with it. And um, so I was I was really glad that it was received well from them. But um, and then obviously for them to to compliment everything that I was going for it was really, really nice. Like to know that everything that I was working hard to achieve specifically in that audition was what was what came across and what resonated with them. So that meant a lot to me. <laughs> Certainly. And um also, we have to get into the fun parts of the voice experience because there's been so much performances that you've done um, alone and with people, uh, battle rounds. Um, you performed with Gina Miles and you did Skinny Love by Bon Iver, which is one of my favorite songs. Um, 
I mean, what was that sort of experience like? Because both of you are so talented and, and gifted with your talents, but why why was that connection of that song so strong for both of you? Yeah, I mean, the the way that Gene and I kind of approached the entire battle round was we just wanted to give it we wanted it to feel like a very cohesive and strong duet performance together. Like I think it can it can um tend to happen where two battle partners will sort of stick to their own lane and focus on making the song good for them and their own individual performance. Um and it won't necessarily gel. And so she and I talked a lot about what the meaning of the song was for us and what sort of message we wanted to convey together because traditionally the song is a heartbreak song um obviously it's about you know loving someone and it being an unfulfilling love and not being um enough despite you wanting it to be um but with the dynamic that Gina and I have it's very much like a sisterly type bond a best friend type bond and so the way that we wanted to approach it and um was sort of that we were going through our own individual journeys, but as the song progresses, we start to support and lean on each other emotionally. Sorry if you can hear my sick cat. <laughs> He's being very nosy right now. Um, but yeah, so that was the core of the message that we wanted to portray. And I think that that really helped guide our decisions when it came to the arrangement, the vocal arrangement, and um, the staging as well. So it was a really fun process working with her. We We really bonded a lot over over that and she's one of my best friends now so. i mean there's there's got to be a lot of um i guess fulfillment knowing that um you've made so much connections with so many different people on that show yeah. and obviously friendships with obviously gina um mm-hmm. who's now in the finale and she's basically now one step away from winning it all um yeah and it, and it's it's crazy to think that I just felt like when I look back on like different seasons of different shows, I I look back and I say, man, it just felt like the season started. It mm-hmm. just felt like the season started and now it's ending. Um, It just felt like Blake's last season started and now it's ending. Um, yeah. It's so quick and how time flies by so fast is, is mind blowing to me. Um, And um, Kelly, Kelly said something to you about your uh, battle rounds, and she she said, Kyle and Niall blocked me. I didn't even have a chance to be with you, so that was rude. I love your voice. It broke my heart. It was beautifully sung. For some reason, Kyle, I was gravitating towards this sweet, angelic vibe. I actually love both your blind songs. You've got great taste in music, too. And knowing how to like navigate a singing competition, these are really smart songs. Your voices sound magical together. The thing that sucks is then you have to pick either one of you. And I think I think either one of you can be in the finale. I think you're both fantastic. Um, and both coaches, Chance and Niall, were all in agreement saying that song choices were perfect. Um, and honestly, like when us fans look and watch on TV while you guys perform on that stage, it's like you kind of agree with them as well that you guys are very aware of what song choices are good and what song choices don't fit. Um, and for you, I guess like uh, also like hearing back of like what you were saying about the, I guess the emotive lyrics behind uh, Skinny Love, you seem like you're very in tune with diving deeper to lyrics, uh, not necessarily into songs, but like being that person who researched the lyrics and understands the meaning. Um, where does that come from? Uh, I think that mostly comes from being a writer myself, you know, and having a deep appreciation for lyricism, even when it comes to like, I'm a big musical theater person. I love musical theater. And so like that has been a big part of, you know, me really trying to find music that that tells a story. Um, But yeah, I think the biggest thing is that I, in my own music, and I'm really intentional about every word that I choose to incorporate in my song. So um of course, I, and I also know that that's how you tell a cohesive message, you know, when you're singing on stage. Um, it's it's hard to make someone feel something if you don't know what it is that they should be feeling, you know. So I think that that's, that was one of the first things that we really decided to to talk about was like, okay, so what does this song actually mean to us? And how are we going to convey that to people who are listening? Absolutely. And um, 
And then obviously on that round, you were officially stolen by Kelly Clarkson. Um, so here's a switch now um, from Niall to Kelly, but it doesn't stop there. Um, uh, then you went into knockouts and you sang Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. And that song is so honest. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, I feel like, I don't want to say depressing, but it is. <laughs> um, it is it is a sad song as well, because it's like, it's a song about like, okay, I don't want people to judge me because this is who I am. Um, mm -hmm. But that fits perfectly to what you are doing on that stage, because it was just you in that moment. Um, and you had the spotlight and you had to take charge of that stage and make sure that you got your message across. And so that authenticity, I guess, is important for you. When I kind of look back on the whole experience for you, when when you have moments where it doesn't sort of feel like yourself and you don't feel comfortable in certain moments, how do you sort of navigate that open book of honesty and, and show that through the emotions, through your performances? I mean... That's a hard question. I think for me, it's mostly just trying to forget that I'm singing to a lot of people. I think for me, the most important thing is sort of abandoning all of the thought of like, okay, well, I'm scared about what all these people might think. I'm scared of what the coaches might think and just sort of embrace it as like, I'm singing this song for myself at this point. Like I'm I'm singing it the way that I want to and in a way that makes me feel connected. And that can be really challenging. That can be very, very difficult to, to throw all that away because it's something that I worry about. But it, it, it goes hand in hand with the message of the song, you know, like um, I don't want the world to see me. Um, I just want you to know who I am. Like it's, it's a very beautifully written song, <laughs> which is the reason I was excited about doing it. Um but for me, it's just sort of a, ref a reflection of this whole journey. Like it's something that I want so badly, even though it is terrifying to know that a lot of people aren't going to love me or appreciate it. So um, that was a really exciting song choice for me in particular. Mm -hmm. And um, I also want to talk about the playoff round that you performed My Funny Valentine by Ella Fitzgerald. Mm -hmm. That's a song that like you could feel a pin drop, I feel. Um, in in certain moments as well in that song, um, I well I I don't think I've heard my funny Valentine by Ella Fitzgerald's version, but I've heard Frank Sinatra's version, mm -hmm. um, but it's still a really great song. Um, it's interesting that you chose so many different categories of songs. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like the drop dead gorgeous like both sides now by Joni Mitchell type music, but it's like. You went from Joni Mitchell, then you went to Iris Goo Goo Dolls, and then you went to jazz, and you did that song by Ella Fitzgerald. There just seems to be like an awareness for you that um, I don't want people to see me as like this type of artist. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, here's here's what I'm offering. I'm offering you different sides of my artistry. I'm not like just one singular thing um is that like an importance for you to show people not only i think in, on the voice but like in, in music business in general to show that like you've got the flexibility to do different things not just a whole one singular thing definitely i mean that's been a something kind of in my life that i've stressed out about not only when it comes to what lane i'm in regarding my music but just in life in general i have a lot of different interests in things and for the longest time I was stressed about like how am I going to pick one thing and how am I going to be able to do just one thing for the rest of my life when I have all these different things that I love and take inspiration from and then I kind of just realized and this and this experience actually helped me realize that is I don't have to pick just one thing you know I can I can do a lot of different things in life and when it comes to music I mean, I've been influenced by so many different genres and types of music my entire life. I mean, I started singing a lot of sort of, you know, singer songwriter stuff when I was really young, but then had this love for musical theater my entire life. 
And then I you know, joined orchestra when I was in sixth grade. And then I sang in the jazz band and then I led worship in church and then I did collegiate acapella. So there's a lot of different things that have influenced me over the course of my 24 years of existence. And it didn't, I don't think it would have felt right if I just chose one specific genre of music and decided to make my brand on the show all about that because that's not the performer that I am. And I know that that comes with a risk as well. It might be a little bit harder for people to identify what kind of artist I am, which might make it a little bit harder for people to connect with me. But at the same time, I think that if people are fans of me, then they'll recognize that I'm making all of these songs my own in my own way. And I think that, I think that that came across to a lot of people, at least I'm hoping so. So. Well, it surely did, and um, obviously, there's 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 so much great contestants remaining in in, in the show, and um, now it's up to you, America. Now it's up to you. Um, you hold the fate of these uh, last remaining contestants, so you better do your job and um, vote for your favorites uh, to win. It's um, it's gonna be a close one. Uh, it's gonna be a very close one. I I, I think this one is gonna come right down to the wire and. I don't know for me, like there's so much things that I I don't want to see who the winner is going to be. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've battled between Gina and grace and mm. um, I've loved country music. And the thing with grace is that like, she just comes in there with like, okay, here I am a girl from Michigan who's doing country music. And it's very rare to see someone do country music in Michigan because it's usually from Nashville or, texas or somewhere in the south but i think that like grace has something that um you don't find often like <laughs> she just comes there and sings traditional country music like it's nothing mm -hmm. you know like she just comes there she's like well i'm just doing my business uh don't mind me i'm just i'm just here performing doing what i love um, and same with Gina. I, I, Gina's way beyond her years. When I see her perform, and I'm like, she's how old? <laughs> you know, like she's how old? She yeah. seems like she's forty five years old. <laughs> you know, like she's she's got like that story. I mean, that's I feel that's also like a key thing to succeed in a competition show where you can also portray that message of like you know, even though I might look young. I can also emote feelings that a 45 year old can go through, even though I'm so young. Um, and that's important. Um, and so as we're wrapping up here, I mean, I want to close this voice journey for you because you said um, on your post, you said officially exiting my voice, the voice era, what an <laughs> insane journey this has been getting on the show was, was always a lifelong dream of mine, but I never imagined just how much of an impact it would have on my life. I'm so grateful to my coaches, Niall, Kelly, plus Chance, and the amazing production team behind the scenes for believing in me. More than anything, I'm so, so, so blessed to have met my beautiful fellow artist on season 23. I would have lost every ounce of sanity by the end of this, of this experience. Without your love and support and camaraderie and your memes, can't forget the stellar memes. And lastly, thank you so much to those of you who have supported me along the way. I wouldn't have made it this far without the family, friends, and fans cheering me on ever since day one. I'm eternally grateful for each and every one of you. Although my time on the show is ending now, this is only the beginning, I promise. That was posted on May 1st of this year. So mm -hmm. I want to go back to that big that, that first post made on February 19th to May 1st of this year. That is crazy to think that you were on the show for that long. Um, is it is it crazy for you to think that like this has been a whole whirlwind of a journey and you've been on just such a ride and a, such a high right now. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, and it, even then, I mean, like when I made the post in February, like, yes, that hearing that seems like forever ago, but when I first auditioned for this season um, for producers, it was in like the first week of June of last year. So it's been almost an entire year since just this season alone, the process for this season has started and it to think that it's all coming to a close of the finale next week and it's it's just been so wild i never would have imagined a year ago that i would be sitting here right now and having all of this crazy experience under my belt and 
you know, going from team to team and then even making a return to come back for chances, coach performance as well. Like it's, it's been a crazy, crazy journey, but I, I really do feel so lucky to, to have gone through it in the way that I did. I wouldn't have wanted to have gone any other way. Absolutely. And um, before we wrap this thing up, um, I want to quickly touch on the um, acapella experience for you. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. Is it Gestalt? Gestalt. <laughs> uh, okay. So talk to me about the experience briefly. And then I want to talk about Delta briefly about the public relation experience for you as well. Mm-hmm. So I went to the University of Florida from 2017 through 2021. And all four of those years, I was in Gestalt Acapella, which is a co-ed collegiate acapella group um, that's specifically focused on competition. So we wouldn't really perform all that much around campus. We would mostly work very intensely on um, maybe like 10 to 12 minute sets of music that were to be used in competition um, around the country. And uh, I feel like I learned so much about myself as a singer and uh, as a musician throughout that process, because I was I was surrounded by other singers um, multiple days a week for hours. <laughs> um, it was it was really really cool, and it helped I think build up my confidence as well. I would not have been oh man, I can't even imagine my <laughs> how I would have done on the Voice if it weren't for that experience. It really really helped shape me into the person that I am today. So. Um, it was cool. I started out as, you know, just a regular member and then I became their director of communications. So I ran their social media and things like that for a couple of years. And then my senior year, I was their director of music. So I was making those calls when it came to song selection. I was arranging some of the uh, vocal arrangements for our performances. So um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that I did it. We took it very seriously, which is kind of funny looking back, but um, it was it was a really good time. Absolutely. And um, you've also, you're no stranger to the business, um, the entertainment business. Um, talk to me about the experience of public relations for you and how that came about for you. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been, I mean, I've always loved school um, and, you know, excelling in class and things like that. But I mean, I always loved music too, but I kind of knew that I was never going to get a college education in something music related for some reason. I kind of always thought that if I was going to get a a degree, it would be in something other than that. I think mostly because I knew that in order to succeed in music, you didn't need to have a degree. Like it's possible to do well. I mean, obviously it helps, but it's possible to do well without it as well. And so I wanted to, if I was going to go to college, I was going to make sure to get a degree in something else. And everything sort of just pointed me in this direction of PR. I was, you know, became the director of communications for my acapella group. I was the social media manager at the Boba Tea Cafe that I worked at. Um, I was a brand ambassador for, you know, a, um, a college music program. A lot of different sort of things were just sort of pointing me in that direction. Um, and then before my journey on The Voice, I was working for a public relations agency where I was specifically working with clients in music tech. So um, if you're familiar with the company Roland, who does a lot of, at least a lot of instruments, they were one of the clients that I worked with. Um, Epidemic Sound, their royalty-free music platform. There are a couple of different ones that I worked with, but it was mostly like music tech clients, not necessarily individuals, but um, it was very cool to sort of... Uh, be able to blend my interests in public relations with my interest in music as well. So um, if it, if this music thing doesn't work out, I would be more than happy to continue down that route as well. But I think for the time being, I would love to, you know, focus on establishing and building up this platform that I have right now and seeing what sort of thing I can do with, with you know, my own music journey <laughs> before I go diving back into the PR world. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, you know, I've, I've heard people say that like, it's important that, um, that you have a plan B, but also people who don't go in with a plan B, who just say my plan A and my only plan is to be a musician. Um, I have nothing else. This is my whole life. I want to do this. Um, so I want to wrap up by asking you, um, if there was one person that is already in heaven that you would want to play a song with, who would that person be? What song would you play? Oh my gosh. What song would I play? I don't know. That's a really hard question. <laughs> um hmm. 
I actually don't know. I mean, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time with this. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like anyone specific that's already in heaven. Hmm. I don't even know. I don't know why I'm like drawing a blank on some great music influences for some reason. Um, maybe Ella. Why not? <laughs> no, honestly, I totally get it. You know, I've I've asked this to so many of my uh, guests that I've had on the show already, and uh, they, it, it's given them a tough time. So I would understand it's it's a hard question to answer. And uh, um, well, I mean, it's the end of our time together. But thank you so much for chatting with me. I had such a blast to be able to explore this whole voice journey with you and um i mean it's it's been a real pleasure to see you on on the, on the show and uh see you fly and and soar your wings on that show and really succeed and you've got a long career ahead of you and um if you want to connect with kala you can find her on instagram twitter facebook youtube and our tiktok um also go watch her vlogs on her youtube channel those are quality content i will say thank um, you to help support my show, you can uh, you can find me on um, uh, all social media platforms as well. You can share it with family and friends. You can also find me on all podcast room platforms. I've been your host, Shigmi saying Thanks for tuning into the show. <music>